Hi everybody, this is Farmer Joe from Farmer Joe and Farmer Wings Garden of Oz. And um, what I wanted to talk with you today about are bare root fruit trees, as well as some um, trees that may have a few more years on them. But bare root fruit trees are generally fruit trees that are maybe two years old and what they do is that they severely cut off the you know the roots that go away out and um, and you buy the the uh, tree with with uh, roots that are more pliable and it's really important that you have real pliable roots as well as real pliable stems when you're planning on doing some things. I'm going to be growing uh, as a big project like most of my projects tend to be which is why I'm probably you know I, I probably have about 10 or 15 projects that are halfway done because I get all these other ideas of what I want to do but the one thing that I'm going to do with many of the um, fruit trees that I bought uh, the bare root fruit trees is that I'm going to put them in what's called an espalier, which is E-S-P-A-L-I-E-R, uh, an espalier is French word, and basically it's a work of art. And I'll get more into telling you about that later on. But um, um, trees that really lend themselves well to espaliers would be things like grapes, peaches, nectarines, um, apples, pears, all those fruits and you know you know do really well in an espalier as long as you maintain it. It is a lot of work. Believe me, I mean I'm not gonna you know fool around with this because I've had espaliers in other places that I've lived but you have to be out there trimming them quite often. But the payoff is really tremendous and and not only visually speaking that it's a work of art and you can see everything hanging down and you know it's not just that it's um that you also get a bigger fruit production you know so it's artistic and it's fruit producing now uh, uh, some of the trees that i, I i'm in I, i'm in the process of doing a number of things right now i've got plants going into the garden I've got um, fruit trees going into the garden, as well as other types of fruit trees going into what we call our orchard. And, and then I've got a banana going in, actually a couple of bananas, and I've got dragon fruit going in, um, which is another big project. And um, what's interesting about that also kind of mind-boggling because I don't know why I'm taking this project on but the with the uh, dragon fruit the dragon fruit flower they flower one night a year well they, the flower lasts one night it flowers it either gets pollinated or it doesn't and then it dies uh, and then 30 days later 35 days later hopefully you have a dragon fruit now, what that means is that you've got to go out and you've got to help the dragon fruit here and there, you know, uh, with their pollination. So, you know, the other bad thing about the dragon fruit is that when they do blossom, they blossom for one night. That's it. It's over. So you either catch it or you don't, which means you've got to be out there every night looking to see if you have any flowers. So this way you can help pollinate them. Or you wait for bats and moths to come by and pollinate them. But um, but anyway, some of the trees that I wanted to tell you about, I wound up buying, um, and they're all young trees, but I wound up buying like 23 different types of trees. Um, all different types. Um, ones that I'm going to have a lot of fun with. I, you know, I'm of the philosophy that if you're going to grow a tree or a plant, you want to, you want that. First of all, with a tree, I look at it that you're planting that tree as an investment for the future. Part of the investment of the future is the beauty of the tree, but it's also, you know, uh, 
eating the fruit from the tree. You know, and then also sharing some of the fruit within reason, sharing some of the fruit with the birds and the, um, the uh, squirrels. Um, but, but anyway, so, you know, with the um, um, roses, I mean, I've got a big rose garden and it's okay. It's beautiful. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's beautiful. But that's, not my, that's really not my thing. My thing is really with the fruit trees and growing the vegetables. You know, so that's where you see a lot of my progress going on and what I always look toward and what it is that I can do. Um, so what I wanted to talk about are some of the trees that I'm going to be growing. And I'll show you, you know, as I'm telling you about them. Like over here, this right here will be, let's see, this tree right here is this one is a Eureka lemon. What I like about the Eureka lemon is that the Eurekas um, blossom and produce fruit all year long, you know, which you can't say that about other types of lemons. You know, most lemons last on the tree for maybe three months, maybe six months, but none of them with the vigor of, um, of Eureka lemon. Uh, a Eureka lemon is the one that you'll pretty much find in the grocery stores. I generally stay away from grocery store type fruit because I want to grow what's unusual. I want to grow the things that are really expensive. Like for example, with the um, with the dragon fruit, they, they're going for out here in California. I'm in Southern California. Farmer Wing and Farmer Joe are in Southern California. And... Um, um, the prices for the dragon fruit can range anywhere from about $7 to $10 a pound. And when you get some of these dragon fruit coming in at three pounds or more, um, then you can see how much they would cost if you decided you wanted to buy something at the grocery store. And by the way, when you get it at the grocery store, they pick them too early. And, but when you let them ripen on the tree, that's when you get the flavor the real flavor. And anyway, so this is one of my exceptions because I want to be able to have fruit all year long. You know, it's nice to have some of the lemons come in because we do have lemons. We have every single type of citrus tree you can almost imagine, uh, at least in the generic form. Um, and what I mean by that is that we might have a navel orange, um, but it's, it might be a Washington navel rather than, than a um, cara, a cara, cara or, uh, orange. And they taste different. They look different. Um, but, um, but together they're a navel orange. So we have navel oranges. We have oranges and grapefruit and uh, pomelos and tangerines. Um, and the list goes on. But, um, but anyway, we're going to be adding to it a Eureka lemon. The other tree that I just bought, no, well, um, this one right here. Let me get it around here. Oops. This tree right here, the bare root, the bare root tree. See, it has nothing on it, no leaves or anything on it yet. I'm going to be... Um, um, digging up the, I'm going to be planting this within the next two days or so. But, um, but anyway, this is a, a Spice Z, Z-E-E, -E, Nectar Plum. You can tell from the, from the last name that it's a cross between a nectarine and guess what? A plum. <laughs> you know, but I'm telling you, this tree, the taste can't be beat. You're going to hear me say that about a number of different trees I have here because I've had some of these trees at our other property um, that we sold in order to move here. And the property that we sold, uh, we had cultivated over 55 trees on that property. And most of them, like from the exotic angle, like, for example, a Spice Z Nectar Plum. Wonderful tasting. You're not going to get anything that tastes 
any sweeter than this. It's a white fleshed um, uh, fruit. And then let me go on. This other one that I just bought today is, and it's right there in the yellow bag. Let's see. Yellow bag, right there. And that is what's called a cot. This one right here that's moving. This is a cotton candy aprium. Okay, so by its last name, what do you think? It's a cross between aprium, apricot, or an apricot, and a plum. And this is described as having incredible flavor. I can't wait. This was a tree that we had at the other property, but we left before it was able to produce anything. Sometimes trees take two or three years in order to produce. So um, that's just inherent in the tree itself. Now, another tree that I, I got, and this one is definitely going to go into the, um, into, with the citruses, and that's this right here. This one is called a, and it's very small right now, it's this one that's moving. It's um, an Australian finger lime. And basically the finger lime is about the shape of your pinky, you know, or at least the first two knuckles of your pinky. It's about that big. And, and it, um, um, the way you eat it is you cut the end of it and then squeeze out, you squeeze out all of what's inside. And, and once you squeeze that out, the, the little citrus balls remain, and it looks like caviar um, uh, with like a, a, a lime-colored caviar. Um, and, and in fact, they call it the caviar of citruses. And it's from Australia, naturally. It's from Australia. It doesn't look like a citrus tree, but it is. And... And um, I, I have a red one and I have a yellow one. The yellow one is someplace else right now. We're going to be planting that as well. Um, um, so those are some of the trees over here. And then I'll, show, I'll bring you around and show you some of the other trees. Um, it's a total of like 20... 223. I'll give you an exact number later on. But over here, oh, the double delight, the double delight nectarine. This one is, um, is described as having intense flavor. The only other one that I've taken, nectarine that I've tasted with intense flavor is something called the panamint nectarine and i do have the panamint nectarine in here somewhere but um um and i also have this one up here is this is the uh snow queen white nectarine uh we had it at the other property and it too was very delicious uh sweet as you can imagine um this banana plant right here is, I mean, it doesn't look like much now, but that's because they got to cut away all the dead leaves. But, um, but this banana plant is called an ice cream banana. They say when you taste it, it has remnants of, of, of um, a banana plant. I mean, excuse me, it tastes like, like vanilla ice cream. Quite frankly, maybe my taste buds aren't that well developed, or maybe they've been destroyed through years of sm smoking. Um, that I stopped about 30 years ago, but um, uh, maybe that destroyed some of the, you know, my taste buds. But I don't taste the vanilla in it. I just taste the the, the sweet flavor, the, the really delicious. You know, if you couldn't, in fact, I was asking for one of two varieties. I was asking for either the ice cream banana or the Missy Lukey, M I S I L U K E I, I think. L-U-K-I. And um, I had those at the other property, and we loved them both. We had huge clutches of, of, of uh, bananas and, and um, very tasty ones. I, I also come from the thing you know, that 
I don't want a tree or a vegetable if it doesn't taste good, you know. And, and so I really look for flavor first and then other types of characteristics. But flavor is the number one thing that I look for. Um, this over here, oh, is a red Fuji apple. Now, I don't know too much about apples because I'm, I, I'm not a big apple eater, but Farmer Wing is. And, and um, you know, I want Farmer Wing to be happy. <laughs> so I, he doesn't know that I bought the, the um, uh, Fuji apple. Um, but with the Fuji apple, you know, um, it's got wonderful flavor, I'm told. And um, uh, it can be used as a pollinator for other types of apples. Um, over here, I have the Shinsiki, Shinsiki um, uh, Asian pear. Now, Asian pears, I do know something about. Because even though they, they may be a cross between an apple and a pear, somehow, you know, and might be different apples and different pears um, uh, to create the varieties that they do sell. Um, um, the apples, you know, the, 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 the Asian apples uh, or the Asian pears, they're synonymous, are very, very good. They're crispy, more like the, the texture of a peach, but the crispiness of an apple. And um, um, then what I, oh, the burgundy plum. The burgundy plum that is so good you know how sometimes with with plums you know the inside might be sweet or tart I'm not too big on the tart ones but um, uh, you have the um, uh, different you know like the skin underneath the skin it has that that whammy the uh, the big punch to it um, I rather not have that you know, and the burgundy plum, it's sweet all around and it lasts a long time on the tree. So you can not only enjoy it, you know, as you're picking other fruit, you can leave some on there so you can come back to them later. Okay. Um, um, oh, the jury, J U, oh, is it J U? No, J I R O, Fuyu persimmon. Now I know in many parts of the country they don't grow persimmon and they don't even ship it to the grocery stores. But persimmons have a wonderful, wonderful texture and taste. And there are two basic types of persimmons. One is called astringent, and one is called non-astringent. This one here is is a non-astringent. Um, uh, persimmon. The astringent ones, if you eat them too soon, they've got to be like really, really soft before you eat them. The non astringent, I mean, the astringent ones. If you eat them too soon, then it's like eating banana peels. You get that, that taste and that texture and that, you know, that whatever it is in, in your mouth. And, um, and it like puckers it up. <laughs> Um, and anyway, the, um, they, the non-astringent, I mean, yeah, the non-astringent ones, you know, you can eat when they're hard and sometimes they call them the apple persimmon, you know, but, um, it's a flatter persimmon. Mo the astringent ones are shaped like an acorn, um, or a heart shape and, the non-astringent ones are flattened and you can cut into them when they're hard and they have a completely different taste to them. They're going to go, the one that I have here, the new one that I have here is going to go next to the other two astringent ones that I have. Okay, so that's why I'll have different types of them. Um, oh, the other pair, the other Asian pair that I have is the 20th century. And the 20th century, some trees need a pollinator. Like by itself, it either produces very few fruit or no fruit at all. And, and it needs what's called a pollinizer. So if you have a, poll a, a tree that basically are friends with this one, maybe friends with benefits, 
if you catch my drift. And and anyway, um, um, you know, it will, you know, by having the friend there, the pollinizer, then one pala helps pollinate the other, and then they both become more fruitful, you know, and so they can both become very uh, loaded with fruit. That's the case of a 20th century uh, uh, pair and the Shensiku, I, I'm sure I'm butchering that name, Shensiku, Shin, Shinseki, 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 you got to remember it, okay? The Shinseki is, re is a required pollinizer for the um, uh, 20th century. 20th century Asian pears are the ones you generally find in the grocery stores. Um, you don't really find the Shinsekis, but, um, but we'll have them both. And because they rely on each other to pollinate, then what that means is that when I plant them in the, gar in the other part of the garden, in the espalier part of the garden, that I'll show you at a different time, probably tomorrow. But um, um, what I'll do with that is I'll, I'll grow the two trees close to each other so this way the bees don't have to go far in order to pollinate, okay? Um, and let's see what else we have here on burgundy. Um, or here's the Panamint Nectarine, um, 20th century, Snow Queen. Um, Gensica, I think, the, oh, I have the two, the two um, grapes. Um, and these are, I've got two different grapes. And you'll see when I, when I show you where the espalier is going to be, the, the idea is that the grapes are going to line the front of the entryway into the garden. So, you know, the effect will be, hopefully, to see grapes coming down from the top of the, um, the espalier. And um, I got two different types of grapes. This is my first time growing grapes. So, um, um, but I do a lot of research and I do a lot of homework on which ones to grow and which ones not to grow. But um, with this, I'm going to grow um, um, the black manuka, M-O-N-U-K-K-A. Yes. yes. And I'm growing, and th those are obviously black grapes, and I'm going to be growing the princess seedless. They say, you know, I didn't want to get the Thompson seedless grapes because you find them in the in the grocery stores. This is supposed to be a, a, a seedless grape, um, and it's the fruit is large, and um, and the other thing about this is that it it um, is supposed to be an improved Thompson. So it's kind of like a Thompson, but it's going to have some improvements in its qualities. Okay, um, now the other things that we bought, I'm going to take you around. Oh, let me, no, I'll take you back here first. You know, Farmer Wing, you might realize from his name, he's of Asian descent. And so there are certain types of Asian flare trees that we need to make sure that we grow. They're very tasteful, um, uh, although you may not be very familiar with it. Um, now, one thing he wanted was a guava tree. Now, I got to tell you, we already have two guava trees on this property, and I think that's one too many. But, um, but this was a guava tree, which is the Thai, I don't know if you can see this. Whoops. Whoops. Anyway, it's a Thai white guava, and and the guava itself is huge. It's like this big. It's like a softball size. It's between a, a hard ball and a softball, um, um, and it's white and and it's got a pear-like quality to it, and it was very good. I got to say that. Um, and so he wanted to have that at this property, and so what farmer wing wants, farmer wing gets. <laughs> And over here, we have, now these you probably have never seen before. 
this right here is a lychee. L I T. This is spelling it different than what I'm used to, but it's L I T C H I. I've usually seen it spell L I T C H E E, um, and it's a sweetheart. Uh, you can see it. It's red when when ripened, and um, this one looks real, really much the same as the lychee. This tree, but this is called a longan. L O N G A N. Um, they both, both the longan and both the longan and the lychee, both have like a gel type consistency in this hard covering. The hard covering, I don't want you to get the wrong notion. It's not like a, a walnut hard covering. It's more like a Haas avocado wall, you know, covering. And inside that, which is, you know, it's about you know, the size of a, a little bit smaller than a golf ball, um, bigger than a, a cherry, smaller than a golf ball. But um, uh, inside there, you take that hard covering off, and inside is um, a very gelatinous, sweet substance. And um, very tasty. There's no question about it. It's very tasty. And I think the lychee has one seed in the middle, and I think the longan, I'm not, I forget whether it had one or one, two, or three seeds, um, but they're very good, and the thing is, if you grow these, you're going to be the only ones growing them. You know how, how many nurseries I had to research and, and call up, and, and finally found one that specialized in Asian trees? And, and Asian types of plants. And so I, we lucked out on this. Um, and, and so over here, so that's that. And let's see where I'm going next. Um, well, I think I'll go back here and show you what other bare root fruit, fruit trees that I'm growing. And that's, and that'll be the end of it. Because um, then starting tomorrow, I got to really get to planting. And um, um, before they die or whatever. Um, this right here, oh, this is the golden dorset apple. The golden dorset apple is an apple, it's really kind of weird because, and they'll tell you in its description that, um, um, the first year, the apples may have, they may taste tart, which I'm not in, well, I'm not into apples to begin with, but, um, you know, as much as I probably should be or could be, and maybe the door is going to turn me around this year, you know, but, but anyway, with the, with the Dorset, um, it starts out with, um, uh, you know, the first year produces it, this, the fruit of tart. But then after that, they become sweet. And, you know, I remembered that description because when Farmer Wing was, um, Farmer Wing, when uh, Farmer Wing was tasting the fruit, he wasn't really that big, you know, he wasn't really that big on it when we had it at the other property. But all he had to do was wait one more year, two years. And then everything on it was, was very, was very um, um, tasty and very sweet. Okay, so that's the Dorset apple. So obviously I'm going to be putting the Dorset apple close to the Fuji apple. You know, and, and then here, oh, I've got the Pakistani uh, mulberry. The Pakistani mulberry, believe it or not, today's the day for pinkies because the, um, the mulberries are about as long as your pinky. I don't think they're as long as your index finger. They're probably not as long as any other finger you got to. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, so it's more like a pinky size. And the thing about the Pakistani mulberry is that it's, it's bursting, bursting with flavor. But the problem with it is that it has no shelf life. So there's a big reason why you can't find it in the stores. And that's because the shelf life is zero. And that by the time they they ship it and it arrives 
it's going to be spoiled. You know, so when you pick them, you eat them that day. That's one of the things you got to remember about the Pakistani mulberry. Um, this, oh, this is a royal crimson cherry. The royal crimson cherry is a new variety this year. Um, it's along with the varieties of the royal Lee cherry, as well as the mini royal cherry. Um, the mini royal and the royal Lee needed each other in order to pollinate. And the problem with that was that we had some years where one flowered before the other and we hardly got any fruit at all. Uh, other years when they flowered at the same time and it was an abundance of, of, of cherries. This one is along those same lines but but it's self-pollinating so it only needs its, itself to, um, to get a, a, a big uh, tree of cherries being produced. Um, and oh, here's the mid pride peach. The mid pride peach is a peach that I had in every single garden that I've had. You know, both let's see, in North Hollywood, Burbank, Silver Lake. This would be the fourth place that I've grown the mid pride peach. It's big. It's a free stone, which means you can cut around it and twist it, and it comes off the stone, the uh, pit. Um, so that's called freestone, and uh, I think I got one more here. No, no, two, four. That's it. So that's it for now. Um, and tomorrow I'll tell you something else you look for, and you know when you're getting bare root fruit trees. But um, it'll be interesting to see where I finally put everything. But um, anyway. So bye, everybody. I didn't expect this video to last as long as it did. But um, sorry about the plane going over. Um, I think we're near an airport somewhere. And, um, um, but anyway, so thank you for listening. This is Farmer Joe from Farmer Joe and Farmer Wing's Garden of Oz. And um, until next time, take care. Bye. Oops. I guess I stop it.